And zip, just like that, 2021 just blew on by, and despite a lot of disappointment, and a lot of people out there already commenting, it's already 2022 here, that's great, okay? I'm happy for you. Time zones, they're very impressive, you can stop bragging. It's still 2021 here, so I'm going to be recapping all of what Apple gave us and why I think this was a pretty amazing year for tech. Let's begin. So actually, the reason 2021 gets an A-plus from me is because Apple exceeded my expectations in many ways. If you go back and watch what I was predicting to happen at the beginning of this year, there was a lot of things I just tapered my expectations for, but I think that's a running theme that I want to keep pounding home into your guys' craniums because if you expect disappointment, you can never be disappointed. Gandhi said that, don't question me about it. But I was not expecting AirTags to come out, I was pretty much just thinking the iPhone 13 would get 120 hertz and that was it nothing else and i knew that there would be some new apple silicon in the mac line of course but i was not expecting it to be so much faster than it really was and thank god we actually got 120 hertz on more than just iphones this year first of all the macbook pro was everything i could have dreamed of i mean we got beefed up thunderbolt connections the m1 pro and m1 max were not just twice as fast as my imac pro but sometimes three times as fast i was able to nab the eight terabyte storage configuration which has been oh so flexible compared to my iMac Pro 2 terabytes. The webcam is fantastic quality at 1080p. The speaker quality is amazing. The microphones are great. And of course, 120 hertz and mini LED made their debut in this generation MacBook Pro with the best battery life we have ever seen on a laptop from Apple and arguably maybe any laptop ever. I've actually not seen that many consumer grade laptops out that actually can compare with how good the battery life is on this MacBook Pro. So I'm extremely happy with it. I've been making content with it ever since I bought it and it allows me to do things that my iMac Pro were not capable of. Like now I'm able to live stream my video editing process for channel members. Shout out to you guys. Thank you for supporting the channel directly for two bucks a month. But now just off camera they're watching me record this in real time and once I'm done recording they're gonna watch me edit it in real time. I tried to do the editing streams right off the iMac Pro before. Couldn't take it. It was too much for the GPU or the CPU when you're throwing color corrected 4K at 60 footage at the timeline it just kind of distorts it too much so so yes objectively the m1 max unlocks more that i wasn't capable of doing with my imac pro it's not just okay great the export times are a little bit faster it's like no this wasn't possible before also the iphone ended up exceeding my expectations because i was going into 2021 just really saying apple give me 120 hertz okay that's all i want i don't really care about anything else and yes that's what we got but also cinematic mode ended up being way way cooler than i originally predicted and I want to keep challenging myself to see if I can do more tech videos in the future just off of the iPhone because the camera has gotten so good and not only is cinematic mode there but ProRes recording finally bringing some pro video codecs to iOS and the iPhone camera has obviously never been better but I love that we got more of an emphasis on video this year in my opinion more so than photos which are all pretty much the same slight differences between all the different flagships and I think people spend way too much time just talking about picture performance and not enough time dwelling on how good the video is and of course the iPhone exceeded its lead when it came to ProRes video recording. No other smartphone can come close to the bitrate and the quality that you can pull from an iPhone video and we even saw MKBHD record an entire video off of an iPhone and with very little people actually noticing the difference from his typical crispy red codec. So I think that says a lot about how great the iPhone got this year. Thank god we finally got one terabyte so big truck series review motorsports could be happy obviously would have liked to Thunderbolt USB-C on the iPhone as well, but either way, I'm extremely happy with my 13 Pro Max, and yes, I still plan on keeping it for many, many years to come. The Apple Watch Series 7 was also a splendid surprise, in my view, just a oh, knock out of the park because everyone was expecting the squared off edge design, even myself, because that's what just everybody was saying, and after seeing all the leakers end up being wrong, after they were all so confident going into September, and to just see Apple go in the complete opposite direction was oddly sad satisfying to me, but also the design itself ended up looking way, way cooler than I was anticipating. I didn't realize Apple could get bezels this thin, and it's still the only Apple product with pixels actually spilling over the edge, and I think that the Apple Watch 
is the perfect product that deserves that type of display technology and it's absolutely gorgeous i still admire my series 7 design every single day and similar to my macbook and my iphone i'm gonna hold on to this for a while i'm not planning on upgrading next year and it's not every day that our expectations are a certain way and apple's able to exceed them so i apologize if many of you out there were disappointed by a lot of apple products this year but for me the ones that mattered i think exceeded my expectations obviously the 24 inch imac after all these months i gotta admit the design still hasn't grown on me i apologize it's it's not happening i keep waiting for this switch to flip in my head where I'm like, oh my god, it's so beautiful, but it, it still hasn't happened. But that's okay, because I wasn't going to be in the market for that anyway. And yes, a Mac Mini with the M1 Pro or M1 Max would have been nice. That's probably one of the bigger disappointments of this year's lineup, is just not getting that Mac Mini we were all hoping for. But hey, we did finally get AirTags after two freaking years of leaks. I was convinced at the beginning of 2021 that they weren't real. I was convinced this is the next Bigfoot. Actually, Bigfoot probably had more validity going for it before AirTags launched, but I was wrong. They did actually come out in April, and they also exceeded my expectations. I didn't end up keeping one just because I don't lose my keys that much, and I couldn't really find a useful application for me to just attach an AirTag to something and find it, but I still overall would recommend them over every other geotracking device because of the strength of the Find My Network. The price exceeded my expectations. I thought there's no way Apple's gonna sell AirTags for like $30 a pop, and that's exactly what they did even less if you're buying the four pack so in terms of like brand new product categories that apple entered in 2021 air tags by far the biggest one and they finally fixed the siri remote that somewhat exceeded my expectations i was not expecting them to listen to so many of our complaints around that trackpad and adopt this like perfect middle ground between thickness aluminum d-pad and touchpad and buttons and mute switch all at once of course i was disappointed by the apple tv box not being much better it's still pretty expensive and the a12 chip isn't really that much better than the a10x but the remote itself is probably what needed more attention and i'm very happy with it even though i didn't end up keeping one i'm glad it exists and i just hope that in time the price can find its way under 99 i think that would be the sweet spot for the apple tv yes the 4k the hd edition does not exist in my view it's snapped out of existence in my head so obviously there's still a lot of things we were hoping would come in 2021 like the iMac Pro or a refresh Pro Display XDR but I'm thinking we don't have to wait too much longer as tomorrow a new era begins a new age of Apple and a new wave of tapering expectations but before all of you complain that I am disappointed prematurely I just want to remind you all that even though I may be pessimistic ahead of time look at how happy I end the year right it's good to expect a boring year in January and then when you're proven wrong you can be delightfully grateful and thankful which is where I am thank you Apple for making so much of 2021 a fun year and let's hope 2022 can put a bigger emphasis on the iPad which I felt was the bigger disappointment of the year iPad mini 6 was good but outside of that it was all kind of just overkill hardware and minor spec bumps here and there so here's hoping the next year can be even bigger and surprise me in ways that I can't anticipate already because I really do plan on keeping all my current Apple hardware for the foreseeable future and not upgrading really anything in 2022, but I would love for Apple to come up with something that I didn't expect that would make me feel I need to upgrade. I can't fathom what that is right now, but I'm hoping they can prove me wrong. And what are you guys, of course, most thankful for in 2021? What do you think is the best Apple product we got? I have to give it to the 16-inch MacBook Pro. It just blew my expectations out of the water, and it's an amazing tool. So that gets my Apple product of the year, but what's yours? Feel free to let me know down in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I hope y'all have a happy New Year's. Take care.